ahead this morning on DC News Now, Decision 2023. Hold our house and flip our Senate. What happens with choice, what happens with abortion will be decided in Virginia this year in this race. DC News Now is your local election headquarters. We're live at the polls this morning. An election day forecast roller coaster, a cool cloudy start and a midday warm up this afternoon. We're getting you to the polls and home before the big cool down tonight. Acting no more, the final hurdle today as D.C. Council prepares to confirm Acting Police Chief Pamela Smith. Carjacking crackdown, new resources from police to help delivery drivers and neighbors fight back against carjackers. How you can get a free air tag today. And stretching your dollar with some health care savings to take advantage of during open enrollment. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good morning. Your time right now is 6 o'clock on a Tuesday morning, starting off with a live look outside. Thank you for starting your day with us, though, here on DC News Now. I'm Tanaya Wright. Hey, good morning to you. I'm Corey James. Shanika is tracking your roads out there. She's going to have more on that in just a moment. But first, turning things over to Jackie, who's tracking the forecast. Things are looking pretty good on this Tuesday. Yeah, not too bad out there. Mild temperatures to kickstart your Tuesday morning with temperatures in the 50s for much of the region. We're upper 50s right now in the district. We're starting off at 56 in Hagerstown, 52 Waldorf, low 60s over towards Lexington Park. We're also holding at 60 in Fredericksburg along with Kaiser. Kaiser, you're coming in at 60 right now. We're mid upper 50s though for much of the I-81 corridor at this point and we're noticing that big temperature difference from yesterday morning. Some of us running at least 20 degrees warmer. We're noticing that difference over towards Woodstock where we're right around 24 degrees warmer than yesterday morning. We're also noticing the mainly cloudy skies and that south southwest breeze between 5 to 10 miles per hour and both of those are keeping those temperatures relatively on the warmer side out there. We do have this cold front approaching the region, but we're out ahead of it for the day today, and that will allow those temperatures to warm up for your election day. Those temperatures will warm back up into the mid to even upper 70s for parts of the region with some more sunny breaks later on today. More details on this. Look at towards the rest of that seven day coming up in just a few minutes. But Shanique is back with the all important look at those roadways. How's traffic at this hour? All right. Well, good Tuesday morning. Things are looking pretty smooth out there. So if you do want to get a head start heading to the poll, this morning you are looking good throughout the district. Here's the Southeast Southwest Freeway and again very smooth. No issues right now, but if you're taking DC 295, you will have some problems. You can see some red out there heading southbound. So right before the Anacostia Freeway do you expect some delays. We're also dealing with a disabled vehicle and that left side is blocked along Suitland Parkway right near Stanton Road. You can see it's causing a major impact for commuters. All that congestion there. So do watch out for that. DC News Now is your local election headquarters, and today Virginia voters heading to the polls to determine the future of the General Assembly. And both Republicans and Democrats are hoping their parties can gain full control of the state's legislature. DC News Now, Tosa Fakile is live this morning at a polling center in Falls Church, and Tosa, there are some major races in Northern Virginia. Yeah, Corey, that's right. A lot of major races we're keeping our eyes on. Good morning to you and Tanaya. Where will the balance of power lie in Virginia State House and how will that impact the 2024 elections? Well, that's why all eyes are on the Commonwealth. And of course, some of those major races are in the Richmond area and in Fredericksburg, but we do have some key races right here in Northern Virginia. That includes District 33, where Senate Democratic, uh, Sen uh, Sen State Senate Democratic uh, Jennifer Boisco holds the seat, but she's currently running in a different uh, district. That's a newly redrawn district. But I have to tell you, the polls have been declared open. We just had someone open the door and say the polls are open. You can see right now some people making their way into this polling location where we are in Falls Church. This is one of three in the Falls Church area. And as of last week, more than 618,000 Virginia voters have cast ballots before today. 35% by mail and 65% in person. That is according to the Associated Press. All 40 state Senate seats and 100 state house seats are on the ballot and the balance of power could come down to how it goes in some competitive districts in Northern Virginia. Some of those districts are the 31st district in Loudoun County, the 30th district in Prince William and also the 33rd and 35th to 40th districts in Fairfax County. We're talking about those state seats. 
state Senate seats. The 40th district is a new seat that's up for grabs because of the recent redistricting. Now, as you make your way to the polls, here's a few things to remember. Um, it, make sure you bring your acceptable form of ID. That's your driver's license or your passport. If you need help voting, there's help available. You can get help reading the ballot or writing from an election officer and for voters who are 65 and older or have a disability. Curbside voting is available. Also remember to check your polling location. It may have moved even if you have not. And of course, like I said, those polls have opened at six o'clock so you can run in, come cast your vote before you head to work. But the polls also stay, also stay open till seven o'clock. I know we're all focused on Virginia's General Assembly, but there are also some local races that are very key on this election day. We'll break those down for you coming up in the next half hour. But for now, we're live in Falls Church. I'm Tosin Fakile. Back to you. Thank you, Tosin. Well, staying in Virginia, the Justice Department is working to ensure compliance with federal voting rights laws. The department is assessing several federal observers, assigning federal observers to monitor elections in several regions across the country. That includes Prince William County. According to the DOJ, these observers will help cut down on voter discrimination, threats of violence towards election workers, and election fraud. Assistant U.S. Attorney Jordan Harvey is overseeing Northern Virginia. And turning now to Maryland elections, voters in multiple cities are heading to the polls this morning to cast their ballot for a new mayor. In Laurel, five people are vying for the mayoral position. Current Mayor Craig A. Moe is not on the ballot, but Rockville Mayor Bridget Newton is also stepping down. Two candidates are running for her place. And Bowie incumbent Tim Adams, Tim Adams rather, is running for a second term against one opponent. And several council positions are also open in each city. And people in Rockville can also cast their vote on four advisory referendums today. City officials say the questions will not result in law change, just allow voters to express preferences. Among the questions are lowering the voting age in city elections to 16, allowing non-U.S. citizens to vote in city elections, and setting new term limits for mayor and city council members. Also electing some or all of the six council members by representative districts. Maryland's po polls close at 8 o'clock tonight. And our election night live team coverage starts at 7 o'clock tonight. Be sure to tune in as we monitor the polls and votes counted for major races. For around the clock election coverage, you can visit our website, dcnewsnow.com. Your time right now is 606 this morning. Ride share and delivery drivers in high crime areas of DC will be able to get free dash cams at an event today in partnership with district leaders. Yeah, this is in response to the rising number of carjackings throughout the city. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is live at RFK Stadium with how you can make your car safer in Liberty. These uh, eligible drivers, they have to show proof in order to get those devices. Absolutely, that's how they'll be able to get them. They do have to register in advance and show that proof, but this aims to help them, arm them with tools such as dash cams and air tags to deter these carjackings and hold criminals accountable. And this comes after two delivery drivers were carjacked just this past weekend, one of whom was shot. Today, district leaders and DoorDash are now teaming up to hand out free dash cams. The idea is to deter carjackers and to provide video evidence against criminals in court. Now the district has seen 840 carjackings so far this year, 74% of which involved guns. Companies like Uber and Grubhub say the safety of their drivers is their top priority. And later today, the district will also be handing out and installing free digital tracking devices or air tags for residents who live in areas that have seen the highest number of car Jackings. The mayor says programs like this will help hold criminals accountable. Meanwhile, neighbors say they are frustrated by city policies. They say have allowed these crimes to skyrocket. It's time to say bye bye to all the city council members who wrote the laws minimizing accountability for committing armed carjacking. And again, those eligible delivery drivers can come to RFK Stadium this morning from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. to pick up those free dash cams. And there will be another similar event held here on November 14th. For now, live here at RFK Stadium, Liberty Zabala, D.C. News Now. Thank you, Liberty. Well, happening today, D.C. Council may finally confirm acting police chief Pamela Smith. Mayor Bowser nominated Smith back in July after former police chief Robert Conti stepped down. That final vote could happen as early as this afternoon. 
D.C. Councilmember Trayon White is shining light on conditions at a youth detention center in Northeast. Yesterday, White made an emergency visit to the facility. He was joined by Councilmember Anita Bonds and Councilmember Brooke Pinto's staff. White says he received reports of several incidents at the detention center, including a confirmed assault between kids who were there. In a statement, White pledged to address the ongoing issues at the facility. And unhappy tenants at a Southeast D.C. apartment complex are calling for D.C. leaders to step in. The district's attorney general is also asking the court to allow a third party to take control of Marbury Plaza on Good Hope Road. They say it's because of unsafe living conditions. Tenants hope this means the city will take over managing the property and use city money to make necessary repairs. More coming down walls. And tenants have to live, breathe, and sleep in that every day. And I guess it's supposed to be acceptable because you know what? We have been treated less than human beings. That's right. Chairman Phil Mendelson told tenants he hopes to have answers by the end of this week. Your time right now is 610. The sorting charges against the D.C. Assistant City Administrator have been dropped. Dr. Christopher Rodriguez was accused of assaulting his wife. His wife said that he pushed her to the ground. Their daughter told police she heard a verbal argument. In a statement provided by the couple's lawyer, they said, quote, Mrs. Rodriguez did not encourage nor request any charges to be brought against Dr. Rodriguez and the charges against him were dropped. The parties agreed that on November 2nd, 2023, neither party physically harmed the other, nor did they intend any party to be arrested as a result of their verbal dispute. Mayor Bowser said Rodriguez is still on administrative leave.